All right, I told you that this was going to happen if you didn't keep your mouth shut. Now, this is the, the oh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the NXT Next Level Wrestling Review. Uh, sorry, I was just in the middle of having a discussion here with my co host, the young grasshopper himself, Colin Wysong. And Colin, you've got yourself in, in quite the predicament, it would seem. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can- off of my head, please. Can y'all? All right, but Ted, as soon as we're done, it's going right back on. Ted, I, I don't know what happened after we got done recording about two weeks ago. Uh, I, I got I got forced back into another suburban. I, I thought I, I thought it had something to do with the Spanish club that I had joined, uh, but apparently not. Uh, I've, I've been in this room with Bello for the last two weeks. <laughs> I'm scared, Ted. Well, at least you got Bello. Yeah. Oh no, that's worse. I just, oh really? I, yeah, I have to hear about Trump all day. Oh man. Not, well, I'm sorry. But can we? I just. I, I, they they gave me like the tiniest little five inch screen TV to watch NXT this week. I just. I just. I, it's good to see you, Ted. It's good to see another person. Well, you know, we got to give you a couple hours of daylight every day. So, you know, hopefully you can make the most of it here as we break down. If This might be the greatest breakdown of NXT we ever done because now you have nothing else to focus on except for the NXT reviewed this week. So, trust me, this is for the best. You're going to be a new man after this, Colin. I will be a new man after this, Ted. It's what, it's, it's, it's what they keep telling me every time I get poked with that cattle prod. You know, Joey Mercury told me once, never miss a great opportunity to keep your mouth shut. And, you know, I think this is a prime example of that, Colin, but, you know, a, a valuable lesson to be learned. Uh, do, do, does that mean I have to stay quiet during the show? I will give you permission to talk for, for the length of the show. Afterwards, though, then, well, that's back, on you. Back, back on the head? Yeah, we're going to okay. have to. Okay. Well, either way, glad to have you back this week. You know, we had Ather, old Athers last week, and it was a good show, but it just wasn't the same without you, Colin. So glad to have you back as we break down what I thought was a, a pretty decent episode of NXT. We'll always talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, all the business of what happened, whether it was done well or whether there were opportunities for better business to be done. And as you know, we go segment by segment and give, truthfully, the greatest NXT wrestling review you can find online and... Well, let's just not waste any more time. Let's let's go ahead and go into the weekly homework assignment. Now, Colin, did you have an opportunity during your reprieve from the show to, to do any of the homework? Uh, unfortunately not, Dr. Ted. I was forced to write, uh, Ben Hameen is the Ayatollah, and I will worship him a thousand times a day. Uh, so uh, my hands, they're very useless right now. Um, I can't. Yeah, it's I. I'm sorry, but I I think I could probably come up with something on the fly, Doctor Ted. Did we have any emails? Well, we did have one. This was some hard homework, Doctor Ted. I I I have to tell you. Apparently, so we only had had one submission, and honestly, it it looks. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and read it. It's from our good friend Hans. I'm always entertained by, and Hans, of course, wasn't shy to share his opinion here. He said, "Women's matches on NXT are usually my." piss break or beer refill so i don't have a clue what these chicks are up to <laughs> that being said how about that dude dragging the great ayatollah into that shit with brong thon man bryn came over the top with those pics of cutie pie Braun. yes for those that don't know uh Braun Strowman apparently was a bit upset at uh what took place over the other day on the monday locker room when we were discussing about posting things on social media that undermine your performance in the ring and, and undermine the stories that are being told and that how wrestlers shouldn't post things or react to things on social media that don't matter. And then Braun proceeded to respond to things that don't really matter. The fact that he was taking the time to, to call us out, it kind of proved our point. It was kind of poetic in a way. Uh, the, Cause the thing that gets to me is like, I guess he really doesn't realize is if, if he actually took the time to listen through what we were saying, there was actually a lot of great advice and we honestly were putting him over saying that Braun Strowman has the capability to be literally one of the greatest names in wrestling for centuries to come. 
And unfortunately, he's just not doing what he needs to do in order to become that. And that's really the tragedy of it all, because we would love to see him be that force in wrestling, because not only would that be great for his career, that's going to help the whole wrestling industry. The more people can get over in any company, whether it's going to be AEW, Impact, Ring of Honor, New Japan, wherever, that's good for everybody. So I want everyone to get over. And all we really do on all these shows where we break down the wrestling is try to identify opportunities to where people can get more over than where they're already at. So that way, not only they can accelerate their careers, but they can help bring up the promotions that they're working for along with them. We all know about the bubble. I mean, uh, Ben says you were, you were in that bubble in OVW. A long time. You know, Braun is clearly still in that bubble and he's, he's going to feed on, you know, I, I, I'm in the WWE. I, I was the universal champion. I'm the, you know, he, he's going to sit here and think that he's better than some of these people because where he's at right now in that bubble. But it's, it's like you said, you know, guys like you, Stevie, Vince, Russo, Ben Hameen, they're just trying to help a guy protect his business and, and to get over and to make his character uh, better, you know, to make his career better. And and I totally get it. And and I felt like he responded back because he was just trying to squash that mark, so to speak. But he, he doesn't – like, if he actually listened, like you said, to any of the shows or any of the Stooges that listened to the shows, went back and just gave him just 1%, 1% of what you guys say, and he actually took care to do that 1%, he, he, he wouldn't be this laughing stock because they see these pictures of him twerking and doing these things. And that's why they put him in these situations because Vince sees this and is like, all right, well, I can't take this guy seriously. Like he's six, six, whatever, 300 pounds. Like, and he's a, he's a, you know, to use a certain word, he's a pansy. He acts like, you know, he's doing all these different things like that. Like dressing up in cat suits, get, wearing little thongs and dancing on tables and things like that. Like, so for, for Braun Strowman to come over the top the way he did, like, who are you guys? I don't know who you guys are. Like, you, he knows. Well, you wouldn't be responding if he didn't. And, and if you don't know who we are, thanks for the free press to all I, of I your, said the same your thing. couple hundred thousand fans. I would say he doesn't understand. He actually just helped us out with that tweet. The, the thing is, I'll play devil's advocate because I can understand just hearing that he was called out. There are so many – podcasted out there and people that are marks and just give their opinions and just shit all over whatever, everything, you know, there's some people that they'll just shit all over WWE and, and not even give them credit whenever they do good things. And most of those people, Ted, never taken a bump in the business, never been to wrestling right. school, never stepped into the ring or, it, it, you know, like in my case, I've never stepped into the ring, but I've done like jujitsu. I've been around like the cage and those types of people that train for fighting. So, you know, it, and I would say you're, you're much more respectful to, yeah. to wrestling and, and what these athletes do in the ring than some of these other people we're talking about. So, I, I, again, to play devil's advocate, I can understand if he didn't have the full context of, of the comments, then he just sees it as, you know, oh, this is another Mark show where people are just poking fun at me, when in actuality we're, we're offering constructive criticism. The difference is that we have people as part of the Hami Media brand that have been around wrestling for several years and have held several roles in, in mm -hmm. national and international companies and have the opportunity to help train people that are currently on different rosters right now, whether it be WWE, AEW, Impact, and, and whatnot. Well, and, the, and that's the, and the difference. And the fact that, that Ben has somebody's – like Ben has someone's ear like a Vince Russo – a Stevie Ray, you know, it just some of these people that we're working with. I mean, Stevie Richards, he was in the WWE. He was in ECW. He was in WCW. So what, like, you just because they don't want to acknowledge him now doesn't mean that you shouldn't just wipe away that history. Like, Ted, I, I have an ECW DVD, <gasps> and there's literally one whole section that is just based around Stevie Richards. Like, Probably. and if it, I mean, so what does that say about what we're doing here at this network and the people that we have on this network? Can you imagine oh, if, if during his, his big first run in WWE, if Brock Lesnar would have been doing that kind of shit, putting up, you know, him running around in the thong Dude, and doing all kinds of stuff, he would not Vince. have had the career. Well, no, he, he would not have had the career that he has had. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because that's the image fans are going to remember. Oh, this guy's really a fun-loving, big goofball. Well, guess what? You're not going to be the one to end the Undertaker streak if you're the big, fun-loving goofball. You might if you're the, the 
big colossal badass that doesn't take shit off nobody, which for a short time, Braun, again, he had that ability back when he was doing that. Mm -hmm. I'm not finished with you and all that shit with Roman Reigns. That was Mm -hmm. great. That was the time to to capitalize on it. And, you know, they didn't, and and probably in part because of what he was posting on social media. Granted, he's gotten worse since this point, you know, being really more over the top with the ridiculousness. And that's fine if he wants to be the, the, the fun loving giant, but he also shouldn't expect to be the marquee superstar in WWE if that's how he wants to present himself, you know, and, well, that, and it comes down to what he wants. If, if he wants to be, you know, the big goofball and, mm-hmm. and do a bunch of kids movies and things like that. Cool. But also you can't get upset when you're not the one that's given the ball when it's time to be given it. Well, and, and, and it seems like, uh, you know, I haven't watched SmackDown in a while since, since I, I don't do the Smack Attack anymore, but it seems like uh, they brought Roman back to take that title off of him because then we had Braun showing up in Raw Underground, so it looks like they might already have something different for him, and if he's not going to be that face with the Universal title, like you said, it could be everything that he's doing. I mean, look at what the WWE is doing with the Twitch streams and the third-party stuff because – a lot of it feels like the, the talent is undermining their business and, and the talent is thoroughly undermining their business on, on some of these shows with what they're doing with these third party uh, streaming services and things like that. So again, Braun, stop undermining your business. Well, Colin, all right. Oh wait, I got to finish reading we still this email finish, from Hans. Yeah. I got, got sidetracked there. He said, anyway, I heard your guys' voices for a while now, and I think you both sound like other people. First, Colin, who do you think you sound like? I don't know, but I, I, I kind of read his email there okay. and i like i like his suggestion for who i sound like he goes on to say machine gun carl anderson listen to talk and shop and it's pretty close yeah, i haven't i, like I haven't it. heard it but i'll have to now talk and shop is great uh dr ted it is it is a hilarious show it is rocky romero uh machine gun carl and luke gallows and they just drink and and talk shit they get they bring guests on like they had uh brian myers on it was it was hilarious. This last one, they had a guy who's a power lifter on there, but uh, I mean, it, talking shops really really good. And and much good like things. Machine Gun Carl, who has a hot Asian wife, I have a hot Hispanic wife. Oh wow! Well, there you go. Maybe you can be a uh, his body double. They <laughs> need some stunt work done. You up for that? We we both have done things at the Armory in in Dallas, North Carolina. I I was there to play basketball. He was there to wrestle. Oh, wow. Well, there you go. I mean, y'all might, might be kin to each other in some way. Hans goes on to say, Dr. Beast, I included a link to a vlog. You give it a couple minutes, see if you guys agree. He does a Star Wars show. Let me know if I'm close or tripping. Well, I'll have to play it after the fact. I'll, I'll include it, though, in the uh, description so that way everyone else can get a chance to see it. Thanks for the great content and education. Can we get some tough homework this week? I gave you a tough homework this week, Hans. Uh, DGP's favorite fan, the Patriot of Iron. Thanks, Hans. All right, Hans, we'll, we'll work on giving you a, a better homework assignment this week. And I look forward to seeing the comparison of your video here. It says, from the Star Wars library, number 23, Han Solo's Revenge. So I'm interested to see my you, potential doppelganger. I just pulled it up. I will say I can tell where the similarities are in y- your two voices, but you, you have just a tad bit more bass Southern. in your voice and oh. it's probably because uh your balls have dropped and you're not a huge giant star wars fan like this guy is well i, I will say believe it or not i am a star wars fan probably not to the level of who we have on the the new force order podcast because I, I can't keep up with with that much detail but I, I am a fan of star wars so maybe there's a similarity and perhaps his nerd them for star wars far exceeds mine so I, either way i'm excited to see uh, or interested anyway to see the uh, comparison here. Well, Colin, I think you've had enough time now. It's it's now your turn. Can you come up with anything for these women? They need your help, Colin. We need to know what happens next with Rhea Ripley and Mercedes Martinez. I think it's it's pretty obvious for Rhea Ripley. The only place that she can go is to that title and, and to work with uh, Io Shirai again, unless they're moving her up to the main roster. Um, because I feel like Rhea Ripley has done everything that she can down here in NXT, you know, she's been the champion. Uh, NXT UK is not running right now, so it's not like they can use her over there as kind of a name, even though I think uh, Ather said UK should be up and running here soon. Um, but I, I think I'm going with Mercedes Thanks. Martinez. Um, I feel like I feel like NXT uh, really 
could have dropped the ball with having her kind of be that that big woman heater. But I feel like they're passing that on to Raquel. I mean, that match that Raquel and, and Rhea Ripley, when those two women get together, I mean, and this, this steel cage match was great. I just feel like Mercedes should be like the big bruiser woman of this division. Now, uh, I, I'm going to continue to keep her with the Robert Stone brand. I love the comedy aspect and stuff that they bring. I like how the, the match ended you know, with Robert Stone hanging over the top of that steel cage. I just feel like there's more story. We need to still flesh out this Robert Stone stuff with her. Have her a few more feuds. Uh, that's, I don't know where I'm going to put her in this, in, in an upcoming feud. Um, like I said, because it seems like she just did her payoff with Ripley. I would like to see her get another feud. Maybe she goes and messes with with Tegan Knox or messes with somebody who's kind of smaller than her. And then we kind of see the the cracks start to happen between her and Robert Stone. And maybe we start to work towards a intergender match with her versus Robert Stone. And, and it's finally the end of the Robert Stone brand or just kind of the end of Mercedes Martinez it, with the Robert Stone brand. And uh, that's, that's kind of where I want to see this go, Ted. I, you know, I, I want to see more from the story of her and the Robert Stone brand and see where this can go. I agree. I do think there's definitely more legs to that story. So I think certainly I, I'm in agreement. I think Mercedes Martinez continuing to have fighting because they interfered again. And what happened? And Mercedes lost. She lost. So there's still beef there. Where's the beef? Wendy's would ask. And we know there's still beef to be had between Where Mercedes is the beef? Martinez. I haven't had beef in like days. They've just been giving me dried pasta. Well, you know what? If, if we have a good show today, Colin, We'll give you some protein. Yes. Just a little yes. bit. We, we, have some, we have some dried turkey jerky we'll, we'll throw in the pasta for you. Okay, thank you. Well, it's the least we can do. And then as far as I'm agreeing, I think I, we were talking before we went on the air here, and I don't think Rhea Ripley has had a singles opportunity against Io Shirai to earn her championship back that she lost. So I think certainly there's still some beef there as well, or mm-hmm. at least a, a, a grieve, an acceptable grievance. So I think... Uh, especially we saw tonight on the show, Io Shirab successfully, uh, well, I don't know if it's a title defense or not, but either way, she had a, a good showing against Shotzi Blackheart. And we saw the week prior, Rhea Ripley, again, getting the win over Mercedes Martinez. Both of these women are being conveyed as top contenders and top w- the top women's wrestlers in NXT. And so it makes sense that at some point down the line, possibly at the next big uh, show, have they announced the next big show yet that they're going to have? Take over or so. whatnot? Um, it. it um, It'll probably be around a uh, Survivor Series, more than likely. It yeah, might be a so. war game. Uh, they could be starting to rev up for a war games um, coming up here. I, I just don't know what teams that you would have in a war games if, if they were. Because it's like they don't even really have anything set up unless it's – Well, there's unless, still plenty of time. There's still plenty yeah, of time. Yeah. Unless we go undisputed era and like Drake Maverick trying to find teammates or whatever. Yeah, we still could. And then, you know, the Robert Stone brand could still, you know, work into something. Like, I I think I would still want to see Io Shirai and Rhea Ripley one-on-one for that yeah. show. But certainly, you know, there could be a War Games type match with uh, with either Undisputed Era as well as Drake Maverick, Killian Dane, and then some others. What well, we saw on the show tonight also, a, a good showing by the Casey Express or whatever they're calling themselves, Casey Contanzaro and mm-hmm. Caden Carter, or unless I'm getting that backwards. But either way, so that to me implies that they're building them up as a team. And so certainly, you know, they could end up having some kind of feud in the next couple months. Again, we got plenty of time between now and Survivor Series. So plenty and of time. And they've actually been on TV a lot lately too, Ted. Uh, I mean, they've lost a couple when they've, they've been showing, kind of showcasing Casey to, to get us used to seeing them. And then they, they had that match tonight or yesterday, last night. Well, speaking of the show... Might as well not delay, unless you have anything else you wanted to touch on wrestling wise before we jump into last no. night's program. No, I think uh, I think the Braun talk was uh, was good because I know when I saw that last night, I, I just scrolled through Twitter and I'm just like, whoa, like really, like this guy like really came over the top on on a mark saying something to him, especially like tagging Ben Hameen and Hami Media Group, and then I was very um, I was very elated by the uh the Hameen army just really going at Braun Strowman <laughs> in the in the response. They smell they I mean, smell they smell the proverbial blood in the water and just Yeah. Uh, I just started scrolling through and it's just seeing like Hans was in there, uh just almost like everybody was in there just taking their shots at uh 
at Braun Strowman. It was it was great. It was it was so great. But in all seriousness, I I really do want to see the better for the guy. We don't have to have a, a public forum to to hash it out. But truly, if if he wanted to reach out and and have a conversation about you know what the context was and what we really feel we're trying to convey to him, so that way he can be better. Reach out. My email. I'm never shy to share. Book the doctor. Gmail dot com. Would we can have a private discussion over things that would help you be able to present yourself better. And while some damage has been done, there's still opportunity to improve and, and get better from here and present yourself in a better light. So now I urge no, you to reach I, out. I, I don't necessarily expect them to, but if so, I'm, I'm always glad to help. I do have a question though. So, so for someone that, again, you've, you've kind of been in that bubble and stuff like that. Now, this isn't a tweet or anything that's going to gain a lot of traction, but do you think Correct. there's somebody kind of pulling him to the side that maybe knows, you know, of Ben or knows of Hameen Media that's that's there and is is or or even just like, hey, like you probably should like calm down, you know, or or do you think there's any of that going on today with him? Maybe somebody sh- shot him a message or anything like that. Honestly, I doubt it. I could be wrong. There very well could be. That's definitely a possibility and someone should, but I also feel like someone would have pulled him aside already and said, Hey, the shit you're posting on social media, that's really kind of undermining your character and kind of killing your credibility, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I feel like, unfortunately, I don't feel there is someone that's pulled him aside and given him these bits of advice because we see not only, and don't get me wrong. I know we're, we're kind of poking at him. It's across the board. There's a lot of yeah. people on, not just to be either. I'm not just calling them out. There's the people across the board in wrestling that are undermining the stories they're doing. And it's, it's wrestling's a different monster than TV and movies, you know, where you're portrayed as this character on the series, but then in quote unquote real life, you know, you're just, just an actor. And I think mm-hmm. until you cross that threshold, you know, wrestling is still, it's, it's episodic television that's presented as if it's, it's an ongoing reality series in a sense, in a sense, when you watch wrestling to me, it, it's basically now reality TV. And when you see these people on reality television, you expect them to be at least similar to who they're playing on TV. Now, certainly they're playing it up too, to a degree, but as long as those series are ongoing, you have to give the viewers at home a reason to believe what they're seeing really is reality television. Otherwise it's just a soap opera. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And wrestling's unfortunately been, been lumped into that box several times over the years, but the difference between wrestling and a soap opera has always been wrestling still kind of blurs the lines between fiction and reality versus a soap opera. is just a soap opera. You know what yeah. I mean? And unfortunately when you stop blurring those lines between reality and, and fiction when it comes to wrestling people to see it as a hokey fake pre-planned bullshit and not actually wow i don't know if what i'm seeing is is real or fake and you just kind of get engrossed in this story and maybe in the back of your mind you know it's entertainment but you still can't help but be drawn in because there's parts of it that make you think oh man that was that was a shoot that was real you know what i mean and the stuff that really makes you believe what you're seeing is is worth the emotional investment ted can we can we stop talking about bad business and, and bad right. wrestlers that don't yes. care about their business and actually talk about wrestlers that do care about their business because they're trying to grab that same brass ring that was handed to someone because of his size and his weight and the way that he looks. I think it's time to, to dive into this NXT show that we watched. Absolutely. Let's do it. And we started off, I, I felt on a, on a really good note, speaking of good business, I thought this first segment did some excellent business. So we start out the show with Io Shirai versus Shotzi Blackheart. Now, this was a really fun match, but there were some spots in this match, Dr. Ted, that I was I was really kind of worried about. Shotzi takes a German suplex on the ring apron on the outside, and it looks like she almost over, like, rotated. Um, and and, and that, that was really a nasty bump that she took there. And then... So let's... The I want to stop on that for a second. Yes, yeah, so the moonsault, too. So there was the two points. So this did great business. A great contest. There was a couple things I would have rather them see cut out of the match because simply they didn't need it. They, they could have done everything else and it, it would not have made the match any worse. In fact, in my mind, it would have made it better. But the, the German suplex on the apron, the value proposition of hitting a German suplex on the apron, unequivocally, no matter, this is, this is I, I sometimes will give my opinion, this is a fact. It is not high enough to make that move worth it. And by, and by what, what I mean is the emotional investment you get from the viewer watching that move 
is not worth the risk of taking it. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Basically, you know, it's one of those ones where it's the hardest part of the ring. The German yeah. suplex is already somewhat of a, a riskier move anyway, and just the potential for harm and injury is is too great. And not to mention, truly, what kind of emotional investment are you going to get from the viewer that you can't do doing something else? I'll tell you what, if she would or were to hit a basic suplex and then got up but then tweaked her, tweaked her back and went down, it would have been, holy shit. That was just a suplex, but she must have really gotten hurt. You know what yeah. I mean? And I'm not saying, you know, to just do that, but I'm saying there's plenty of other ways you can get emotional investment than doing something that could potentially harm. And I, I, to me, that I would, if I was down there and had any say, I would say I don't ever want to see that, that move being done again. In fact, I would be very picky about what moves can be done on the apron and what can. Not, not that you can't do it. I still think you can. There's just certain ones, like a German suplex, that I would never, ever do just because it's not worth it. Mm-hmm. And going to the moonsault, it looked like Io was was a little far out for it. And so yeah. when those feet came down, and, I, and this is an important thing to know too, you have to ha- get your spacing right on those. Uh, my tag team partner, Adam Revolver, back in the OVW, suffered a, a really bad concussion once because he was not in the right place. And the foot came down right on the top of his head. And fortunately, he recovered from it. But I've seen multiple people get concussed from taking an errant foot to the back of the head because they weren't in the right position on, on a dive or, or a, some sort of aerial maneuver. So that, that's hugely important. And so spacing's everything. So that, now that being said, I'm fine with the move itself. I wouldn't say I'd cut out the move, but you have to make sure your spacing is correct. And that, and that is a risky move too. And that's where, you know, at least I can, can show, you know, I'm okay with taking some risk and if done correctly, that can be perfectly safe as far as not getting injured. But if your spacing isn't right, then the potential for harm is going to be there. When it looks like she kind of took a low rotation on it too, like she kind of like, and, and again, you can tell me if I'm wrong or not, but I feel like both of the girls are at fault for this. I feel like Shotzi was a little too far out and, and EO, I mean, Ted, she could have hit like a handspring. If she had just put her hands out the way that she jumped off the top ropes before she rotated, like she literally could have braced her hands off the mat and like done like this weird, handstand off her moonsault like it, it, she just i this is probably one of the worst moonsaults i've seen io shirai hit and she's like known for her moonsault like christopher daniels is known for his moonsault like it, this was i was surprised that like i when i saw her jump and saw the kind of the trajectory that she was taking i'm just sitting here like ooh, and then she I mean, knees and legs straight on Shotzi Blackheart's stomach and chest and everything. And that's, and I wonder if that's why she gave her the respect spot there at the end, kind of, because it's like them kind of apologizing to each other, like her being like, you know, I messed up, like kind of my bad. And, and they still kind of did that little, they worked in a respect spot with her just kind of like apologizing yeah. to her uh, there at the end. I, I would guess that was probably already written in because the story yeah. that we've been seeing on television, like last week we saw like kind of the friendly rivalry where Shotzi had the title and then EO took it back. But, you know, Shotzi was still smiling at her and kind of showing her respect. So I think that, that was played into, I think that was probably already going to happen. And especially given the context of the match, they got mm-hmm. a heck of a lot of time for a baby face, baby face first match of the evening type thing you know so this wasn't just uh this wasn't just to put Io Shirai over it was just as much to make Shotzi Blackheart look like she can hang with the champ and now, so I think at the end the mutual respect thing made made sense either way don't get us wrong uh ladies and gentlemen this match had some great parts in it I really oh, enjoyed it was good the this was of, a good piece a little business. bit of chain wrestling and stuff that they had there I was surprised to really see that from Shotzi I mean she the way that she was wrapping the arm around with the leg and then put her in that like weird, like rings of Saturn where she had the one arm up, but she had the other arm like played around with the foot. It was a really, really good match. It was just kind of those two spots that that I noticed when watching it on the, on the watch through. And I'm just like, Ooh, like that, like you don't, there's no, no fans in the ring, like an apron spot like that. I feel like is one that if fans are there, you're going to get that little bit of a pop, especially because you can hear the people kind of around the ring, as she rolls out and kind of rolls towards the barricade. And uh, I just, yeah, I, overall great match. Don't, don't let us just these two little nitpicky spots uh, take away from the right. match. Right. And, and it did, like it, did said, and, it was a great And it match. did not take away from the match. The nitpicky mm-hmm. spots is more so because we want to see these workers continue to have long, healthy lives and careers and not, not get injured. That's really what it comes down to, but it's more so I would like to see those changes more so for their sake. But as far as the match, it, it didn't do anything to, 
influence my my liking of this match. To get emotional investment from the viewer for for what you do in the ring, there's very few things you can do in that ring that people are going to relate to. People can't relate to what it means to be picked up and slammed down. People can relate to getting poked in the eye or, or getting scratched or getting their hair pulled or getting kicked in the balls. That's about it. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? And not to say that you need to do all those things every match, but just keep in context. If you're going to do uh, some kind of cool, innovative maneuver, make sure at the very least, as cool as, as it looks, that it's not something that you could potentially have an increased risk of actually getting injured on. Because at the end of the day, truly, it's not worth it because it's not going to get you any more over. It just isn't. Well, and, and again, no matter how many times these guys do these things, they can still mess up, i.e. just look at Matt Seidel in AEW. The guy who did a times, million times. How many times has he done that? I mean, like you said, the the what well, what Ben Hameen says is when you can do it 10 out of 10 times perfectly, I'm sure – well, oh, Johnny, Seidel Johnny Ace, there. John Laurinaitis, when, when I've done uh, tryouts with them, and he has said on multiple occasions, well, I know at least on one occasion, he, he gave Seidel as an example and said before we even allowed him to do the Shooting Star Press when he first debuted, we had him, he had to do it five or ten times, and he had to hit it perfect every time because if he didn't, they weren't going to let him on TV. So it, it just goes to show one, one small – oh, yeah. One, well, the, well, it was after, yeah, he, he debuted after Lesnar, but he had to prove he could hit it multiple times accurately before they even let him do it on TV. But as I was speaking on that particular situation, I think that came down to the referees not doing their due diligence and knowing the spot was coming and wiping the rope down, which is traditionally what would happen before a spot like that is coming up. But this isn't the AEW show, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. This is the NXT review. You, you can watch those other miscreants on that other program bronies yeah we actually this was a fun little match that we had next we have Tommaso Ciampa versus Desmond Troy and and Dr. Ted I have seen Desmond Troy before but the only other time that I saw Desmond Troy he was getting his butt kicked on Smackdown versus Sheamus when they brought Sheamus back to make him look like a beast uh this guy is got the re- he, he looks like he's a pure wrestler but Tommaso Ciampa just takes it to him. I mean, like, takes the boots to him. This was a nice little squash match to set up the business that we have coming up next. And uh, right as Ciampa's about to grab a chair and just destroy Desmond Troy, uh, Jake Atlas walks out and cuts a really good promo. Like, I was surprised to see the the seriousness and the passion from, from Jake Atlas here. I mean, Ted, how do you feel about Jake Atlas's promo here? It, it was fine. It was good. It was certainly better than other performances that we'll get into later. I, I did have a note here that I would have liked to see a little more emotion, and, mm-hmm. and I haven't seen his previous work, so maybe this was a step up. It certainly wasn't bad. But yeah, I, to me, here, here's what I try to think. This man, Tommaso Ciampa, tried to end your career, tried to end your livelihood. He tried to end your ability to put food on your family's table. To me, like I wanted to see him either scream or, or, or tear up or just, just, you know, almost be beside himself and lose his mind that he, he went really good at bringing it up an octave or or bringing it up a notch. I just would have wanted to see maybe one more notch. And now truly I do it. I'm probably being nitpicky here because you're right. It it was a good promo. I just always, and and that's where I'm very self-critical of myself too. And I felt like there was opportunity to maybe kick it up just a little more of a notch. Like I said, you know, get beside himself, you know, whatever, whatever he would do when he really gets mad. I just, when I saw this promo, I, I didn't believe this is how he would act when he's really mad at something. Well, uh, yeah, I, I feel like they've tried to, you know, the times that I've seen Jake Atlas, he's he's got the smile on his face. He seems like he's the happy-go-lucky baby face. Yeah. And and, and that's where I felt like he did kind of come out with a little bit of an edge. Now, yeah, we could sharpen that edge. Uh, I feel like that's what you're trying to say here is, is that he can sharpen that edge a little bit. Um, but, I mean, for, I guess, a guy that, I, I mean, like I said, I don't know much about Jake Atlas outside of NXT and the, just a couple of matches that we've seen. But um, I, I feel like he, this edge is something that he hasn't had before, and it's something that they're trying to work towards uh, with this feud. And and who knows where this can go? I mean, we we got a little bit more later on in the evening with this, and so it could set up even more stuff. Tomas is gonna drive him to do some things like like he did with uh, Johnny Gargano. Tommaso makes you play his game a lot like Triple H. You know, like he gets in that headspace and, and, and you end up fighting his fight instead of the fight that you, you want to come into that ring and fight. And, and I think that's what's going to happen with Jake Atlas. And I, and I think that's really going to help, help a guy like Atlas. You're right. And this certainly based on 
comparing from previous performance was a step in the right direction as far as looking more assertive and looking more aggressive. And that's always going to be a good thing. All right. Well, we get a backstage segment with Finn Balor, basically saying that he is the NXT champion and it's the most important championship in the world. Dr. Ted, what is your most important championship in the world? Oh man, that's a, that's a good question. I'm trying to think of a, a shitty bullshit, bullshit, funny answer, and I can't really come up with one, but I guess they're talking about like, championships that I've won? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd say probably the OVW Tag Team Championships, the the longest reigning tag team champions of all time, the Elite, the original Elite. So still, despite the fact that we have a team as the Elite in several years, we still hold the record for most days as OVW Tag Team Champions. Check out our shit on YouTube. (laughs) (laughs) So we go back to the ring, and we've got Austin Theory cutting a promo, says that Bronson Weed's win last week was a fluke. Uh, Puts out an open challenge to anyone in the back. We get Kushida. Apparently is now the the punisher of the pedos in NXT. He he took out (laughs) Velveteen Dream. Now he's going after Austin Theory. Everybody better watch out. Kushida, the pedo punisher. That's right. This new gimmick. (laughs) So Kushida ends up winning this match uh, with the hoverboard lock. This is just a fun, fun little match. But Kushida showing some edge here, uh, refusing to let go of the the hold after the match. Uh, That is uh, very unlike a babyface here in this situation. Um, I don't know what would have pushed him to do this. I'm excited that we're going to get Kushida more on our TV week to week if this is what's going to happen. If they're going to have Kushida come in and, and... and maybe turn him heel. I mean, is that what they're? Is this what you would do if you're going to start to turn someone heel, Doctor Ted? Is is just have them not let go after a match on a hold? Not necessarily, because it always comes down to context. You know, who who did he do it to? He did it to someone that was running his mouth. And to me, I I, I don't know. I feel like the story here is we saw Kushida a few weeks back. I take it out when he was trying to get an opportunity for the NXT North American Championship. And he got taken out by Velveteen Dream. So to me, the, what I am inferring from what has happened the last two weeks is now that he's back, he's not taking shit off nobody. And mm-hmm. maybe he was holding himself back. And now people are going to be sorry because he's bringing a more aggressive side of Kushida that they haven't seen before. And so Velveteen Dream was the first victim. Austin Theory wanted to run his mouth, then he's going to get shut down too. And if anyone else wants to try to step in Kushida's way, then so be it. But he's bringing the hurt, so to speak. In so many words, you know, obviously that isn't something he would necessarily say. But to me, that the context of where, where they've shown Kushida come from, you know, missing out on his opportunity, then getting his ass kicked afterwards. I think anyone, if, if they were to come back from something like that, would probably be a little more aggressive in, in real life, whether they're a, quote, good guy or a bad guy. But to me, I still see him as the, the protagonist in the story because he's someone that missed out an opportunity perhaps because he wasn't as aggressive as he should have been. Now he's kicking it up a notch and I'm liking what I'm seeing. So I don't think necessarily it's a heel turn. Granted, it it could head that direction, but to me, it's, it's, it's him playing up the context of a a real competitive environment. And he kind of got burned when he wasn't as aggressive prior. So now he wants to win championships. So he's bringing more aggressiveness to his competition. And that's the no, way that, that was the way I inferred it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so oh. one thing in that match, I really, really liked, I love when people put over body parts that are hurt. Mm-hmm. Kushida kicked the elbow of Austin theory. Then they went into a series where Austin theory tried to shoot off Kushida. And then instead of shooting him off, he stopped and sold the elbow allowing Kushida to, to, to get more offense on him. Love that spot. That's how to put it over any, any time you get the little bit of, selling and and working that really works that was that was really well done and i just want to they don't do that anymore not too often so when i see it i'm like awesome awesome that was good well we'll get to the tag team match here in a second i i would be remiss if we didn't talk about the drake maverick segment of him walking up to the arena um and they're them interviewing him about his match tonight and and he was just like, no, I, I haven't even talked to Killian Dane. I don't, I don't even have his cell phone number. Do you, do you have his cell phone number? Like, just the, <laughs> the, the fact that he was so like, yeah, my, ta- my team, teammate. And then the, the interviewer just kind of got the doubt, put the doubt in, in Drake Maverick's head as he was walking into the, to the arena. I, I really enjoyed that little, little spot that we had outside. Yeah, I, it was uh, Drake Maverick knows, knows how to play up the character stuff. And that was, that would get another example of a, a little bit of playing into that character for, for any character, but 
you know, we're talking about his in particular, it goes a long way. And this did a good job of, of selling the relationship between Drake Maverick and Killian Day. Cause he, he's like, Oh yeah, we're a team. And they're, they're clearly not a team. Um, right. Doesn't have the guy's do, phone number. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't even have his phone number. And he gets punched in the face every time he sees him. So I don't, I don't, I don't know how many of your friends you're punching in the face. Every time you see Ben Hameen, you're like, Hey Ben, <laughs> I don't think I'd hang out with him anymore. <laughs> no, no. I don't, I like Ben, but if he punched me in the face every time, that'd be it. Be done. He's five dollar <laughs> face slapping you every time you see him. I know they charge me for it. And they're like, no, I'm not playing this game. You get you get an invoice at the end of the month. For what the hell the is this? He slapped you. We go to the NXT Tag Team Championship match. We've got the Fashion Police versus Imperium. Now, now, Doctor Ted, I don't know if you were really watching uh, Raw and SmackDown when they when the Fashion Police were at the height of their fashion policing i've seen i mean i've seen some of the segments that they did because a lot yeah. of them were involved with my buddy uh apoc or uh rick victor from the ascension in WWE. so I've, I've seen a few of those i can't say i was watching regularly but i did see a lot of those type of segments if that's what you're referring to yes yeah those that's that's what i was referring to i i i thoroughly enjoyed the fashion police oh, i yeah. hate when they when they kind of took them away from us but we get them back tonight uh, I like the intro. I just like everything that like the way that they can meld these different things. Like when they came out as the Mounties, I wasn't high on Fandango when I first saw Fandango, the whole dancing gimmick. But once he, he teamed up with Tyler Breeze and they, they started doing this gimmick, I became a fan instantly. Like uh, the, the hate just went away. But we, we go to this match. Uh, Barthel and Eichner, you know, I normally have to pay respects to Imperium here, but they just came down to the ring and, and just got to it before the match even started. I mean, the, the poor ref wasn't even in the ring. He had to climb in uh, basically as soon as, as these guys uh, started beating each other up. Well, Brizongo is able to steal the win again as Breeze rolls up Eichner after Eichner and Barthel were trying to get the European bomb on, on Breeze. And uh, Fandango comes in, makes the save. Breeze rolls Eichner up after a Hurricane Rana and, and, Still NXT Tag Team Championships. Uh, we've got Brizongo. They they put away Imperium. I, I think the only other feud that's next for them or kind of challenge for them it, are the two two guys from Legado del Fantasma, uh, which we didn't actually see uh, Legado del Fantasma tonight. They they weren't on our TV. It's it's like they 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 kind of took them off TV. Just kind of have us have it, like, out of sight, out of mind for. Were the they week. on? Were they on last week? I can't remember. Uh, or did you even watch last week? No, I didn't watch last week, to be honest with you. I don't think they were on last week, now that I think about it. Yeah, it's interesting, though. You so, think so, there'd at least be, be like even just a 30-second thing just to you know remind people that they're the, on the lookout for gold or, or just something to just keep them relevant, you know, because they ha- they've been involved with, with them anyway. Uh, even just, you know, at the end, 30-second of, you know, congratulations, Brizongo, but don't forget Legato, still fantastic. You know what I mean? It could have been as simple as that, just to keep them relevant. Because you always want to keep people that might be watching for the first time reminded what's going on, because let's say next week they run out, then people that might have just turned in this week are going to be confused, like, well, who are these guys? Versus if they would have even just gotten 30 seconds here to remind people that they're they're on the hunt, then that still puts in the viewer's mind, like, oh, okay, these guys are, are – are going to be coming after them. So that's where I, I do think at least mentioning them somewhere in the program, it would have behooved them to do that. Well, Ted, they're, they're, they're probably busy looking for me. I think that's probably where, why they haven't been there for two weeks. It's, it's kind of odd. Colin, Colin's not on the next level and I get kidnapped and we don't have Legato del Fantasma. So, so maybe, maybe they really did like me when I joined the, their, their little Spanish club there. Well, maybe they'll break you out of here. Yeah. Ooh, that would be nice. Uh, we, we, we go to another tag team match. We have Jesse Kamea versus Zia Lee, or well, sorry, Jesse Kamea and Zia Lee versus. I'm going to call them Casey Squared. I don't know what what other name they really have for him, but we got Casey Catanzaro and. For some Kaden reason, Carter. I feel like at one point they called him the Casey Express, which I feel is kind, Express, of, kind of kind yeah. of lazy. The Casey Catanzaro and Caden Carter go over with something that commentary just kept trying to put over, like, "Oh, have you ever seen a a pin combination like that before?" And and it looks like a Carter, they hit some kind of a pump kick into like a crucifix bomb prawn hold pin for the win here. Um, and then we get the respect spot at the end. Uh, or actually, no, sorry, Lee didn't want to do the do the respect spot. But this was a fun little match. I I feel like like we kind of talked about these two girls are, are getting a little bit of a push here. 
Uh, they've been on our TV a lot. They've been, they've been putting others over uh, a lot. So this was a chance for them to kind of get those, those losses back uh, or, you know, just kind of get back on the right side, I guess, with the people watching at home. Do you – I'm trying to think. A person like, like – a, a performer like Jessica Maya and Zia Lee. Now, I'm pretty sure Zia Lee's more of the veteran coming over from uh, – I think she's Chinese. I think so. Um, and Jessica Maya, do you, do you see – potential with with these two i mean uh as a tag not, team or just as individuals just in general as individuals i would say as i lead i've seen some stuff and i guess i haven't seen it i, I won't say not jesse kamea because i feel like i haven't seen enough of her but based on what i saw tonight i didn't necessarily see anything that stood out like oh she's she's got something but that that being said that's okay because her role wasn't to, to have the spotlight here the spotlight mm-hmm. was on caden carter and casey Cantzaro. and so in that sense the you know the the it was good business because really it was more about putting them over. And this was a situation where you don't necessarily, you know, I say in a lot of situations, it's good when you can have a match that elevates both stars, but considering we've seen Caden and Casey usually on the, the other end of putting people over this, this was really a better situation to make them shine more than their opponents because they needed that little bit more of a rub and didn't necessarily need to be going 50, 50 here. You know, they, they got more of the spotlight in this match. And I think for this instance, it was needed based on the context of what we've seen these two wrestle like and been used like over the last few weeks. So if they are going to elevate them, they needed to be shown more, more like their, their higher level performers. And I think that did just that. And so to that end, Zia Lee and, uh, Jesse Camilla did great business here and putting them over. I'd say the one thing is, uh, of course, I'm always going to call out there's no hot tags tonight. Yeah. Uh, that, being said, that. <laughs> that being said, that being said, Kenton Zaro had great, great, great fire on her comeback. And at least that, I felt that did make up for it. He just was wild, you know, kick her in the stomach, kick her in the, hit her in the chest. And just, you know, she was bing, bang, booming right on the tag. And it, it was great. It made it feel like, oh shit. Yeah. She's, she's laying into Zeely or Zeely, however you pronounce it. Uh, the one thing, though, that it, it's a nitpicky thing, and only because there are ways you can work around it, was you blew this great hot comeback, and then you turned to your partner who just got her ass kicked and is still selling, still potentially hurt from the heat that she just took, and for no reason you turn around and tag her in just so you can do your cool double team for the win. That did not make sense. In a real competition, if I'm in the midst of winning, I'm not going to say, hey, injured tag team partner you get a little bit more you know it's like no yeah. you you're clearly just got hurt now that being said something could have easily happened one of two things either casey tags herself in and then they go into the spot or it's as simple as she blows a little comeback the heel gets a simple strike whether it's you know a, a shot from underneath a thumb to the throat whatever and then that allows her to tag real quick reverse go right into the double team one two three you know, and that it's, it is a nitpicky thing, but in the context of competition, you, you got to think every little thing that makes sense because the smallest things, even if it's not something that the viewer at home consciously recognizes, any little thing that isn't based in reality is going to potentially take someone out of the emotional investment of the match. Uh, not saying that was a big enough spot that that really would have made people go, Ugh, but still, it, you got to think of play to the height of your abilities and play to the height of what is going to make it believable. And so tagging in your injured tag team partner for no reason, just to hit your double team, it, it, that does not make sense. But I also think there were ways they could have still done what they did almost exactly by just taking one more little extra step to work into it, and make it more believable. I feel you on that one. Uh, so we go backstage. Killian Dane is telling Drake Maverick that he never said he would be his partner. Dane tells Maverick, good luck tonight. Of course, you know, Maverick just shrugs it off and then uh, makes his way to the ring. We've got the Undisputed Era versus what should be Drake Maverick and Killian Dane. But uh, it's it's a, a two-on-one for pretty much all of the match. As the match is going on, they keep cutting to the back and they show in Killian Dane just sitting there with the rest of the production staff uh, watching uh, Drake Maverick get his butt kicked. And Steven Regal's had enough. Regal comes into the, the camera shot and basically tells Dane to, to get out there. And Dane goes out there reluctantly, saves, saves the day, clears the ring, beats up uh, Fish, beats up Roderick Strong. And he, he gets uh, Fish. Fish grabs a chair, uh, hits Killian Dane with the chair, causing a DQ. Of course, the Undisputed Era gets out, leaves. And, and while Maverick and it, Maverick's trying to celebrate, and uh, Dane just 
cold cocks him again with another right hand, just completely knocking Drake Maverick out in the middle of the ring. Like this was this was a a, a fun little match to kind of break up everything that we've had here. Uh, just to have, I mean, Drake Maverick was just selling his ass off the whole the whole match, and, and Fish and and, and Strong were, were you could tell they were enjoying it. it. Like I said, this was a fun little match just to watch Drake Maverick just sell all over the ring. Uh, what were your thoughts on this, Doctor Ted? This, this again, I thought this was good business in furthering the story and the relationship between Killian Dane and Drake Maverick. To me, that's that's what we're selling here. And so, to that end, it still it still did this. And Drake Maverick got to show his baby face fire, fighting from underneath, never say die attitude, despite being two on one, and you know, just showing that it was going to take a lot more than just taking a couple hits to take him out. And then Killian Dane made the reluctant save, looked like a monster, and then. When they tried to celebrate, again, took out Drake Maverick. And so I like this continuing story. And it made me think, you know, perhaps in the future we'll get something. Where I've never seen it happen. Let's say they would, they somehow find a way to win the tag team championships, get their hand raised, and then Killian Dane turns and just knocks out Drake Maverick, <laughs> takes both championships and walks away. See, you you're even pop for that just, just hearing it. So oh, I think man. that's that that would be a great moment. Yeah, because uh, I don't think anything like that's necessarily been done where someone – like you have the oddball tag team, but like literally the tag team – that where one guy hates the guy so much that he continuously just kicks his ass. And that's an ongoing thing, you know, like they go, they're, they're celebrating at a bar too. And then he annoys Killian Dane, and Killian Dane just punches him and says, I'll have another drink, please. You know, <laughs> and then oh, yeah. this shit like that. It's good stuff. I, so I, I like this story. I really do. And uh, because of what we saw, I don't know if you're getting ready to get to it. Uh, Cause I think it took place after this. We saw Jake Atlas get attacked by Tommaso and we yep. saw Kyle Riley make the save. And so this this goes back to the theory I pitched a week or two ago, I guess a couple weeks ago that you and I were talking about, or maybe it was last week where I said it looks like they're down the line going to split up Undisputed Era with potentially Adam Cole, who act very, very baby uh after his loss to Finn Balor, as well as Kyle Riley. This isn't the first time he's tried to step up for people that were getting beat up. You know, it seems like, interestingly enough, they're, they're – because I know – Classically, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly have been the tag team, but it seems like they're they're kind of doing an interesting split where it looks like Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly are going more towards turning babyface versus Bobby Fish and Roderick Strong staying heel. And this doesn't mean anything, but it made me laugh. And I said, well, Roderick Strong, you can tell he's got that that facial scruff, that, that scruffy little beard. So, you know, that means he's evil. So that's how we know he's going that way. Uh, but it does seem like they are based on the character work we've seen and what's t- taking place in the ring that they potentially are going that direction. Well, and and you alluded to it. We we were backstage and Atlas is is walking through the the back lot, um, just kind of still. I, I think he was cutting a promo or, or being interviewed, and uh, Tommaso Ciampa just comes out of nowhere, throws him into the production truck, just beats him up, and then of course Kyle O'Reilly just comes out of nowhere and he's like, "Hey man, it's a parking lot, dude!" Like. Come on, man. Tommaso Ciampa like basically tells Atlas that he'll see him in a couple of weeks and that basically looks at O'Reilly and says, you know, I'll I'll see you here soon too. So it can you can like, you uh, one more time do another Kyle O'Reilly parking lot impression? It's it's just the parking lot, dude. I like that. Dude, unless you're gonna park, you need to get out of here. Yeah, you gotta get out of here. This is I don't this see is a valet. Car. This is valet, bro. <laughs> like, too funny. Oh, uh, yeah. So so I mean that's he just and and Kyle's facial hair and and the way that he has his hair it just makes it even funnier because like you said like he's got the weird scruff so he looks like he would be like this douchey bad guy but he's just like hey bro it's a parking lot man come on (laughs) hey hey, bro take it to the ring people trying to park here man not fight (laughs) oh man oh that's funny uh so we get commissioner regal announcing a number one contenders match for the nxt championship uh, it, it's going to be a gauntlet eliminator. I mean, they're getting a lot of work for these uh, these women in this match. I mean, it's who do you feel like is the favorite oh, this in all the, of this? I, for the women, I thought it was, for some reason I thought it was for the guys. Maybe. I oh was, no, sorry. Maybe I. But I thought they were having a women's. Uh, oh, they might be, might be both. Maybe. Yeah, I could be wrong. As far as the gimmick, and it's all about the context. So I was I was looking at the rules. I'm actually okay with this because to me, it's just a different style on like a Royal Rumble type match. Now I can tell you as a writer, these type of matches can be very difficult to 
to book because literally every entrant, you have to think about the context of what just happened prior and kind of work that into the, the thread of the story. But it can be done. And actually, interesting enough, I actually enjoy writing these type of matches as much as they can be frustrating and difficult because it is fun to kind of think about the different pieces that can, because you have so many different types of characters and trying to work in how each character or wrestler competitor would interact and, and face off against other competitors. It is fun, although it is a lot of work to do it in a context that makes everything meaningful and, and continues to keep people's interest throughout the, uh, the story of, of this rumble type scenario, but it can be done. And I think there's a lot of potential here and actually I'm a little bit jealous because I, I, this is something I would like to sit down and, and write because as difficult as it is, it's also very satisfying what it, what it could come together. I've, I've had the opportunity to write a couple rumbles and although they were difficult, the, the ones at least that I've written came across very well when it's done correctly. It, really it helps to elevate a lot of different people and then the nice part is you have so many other stories that can be told outside of that you know even though the concept is whoever wins then you obviously have that story but there's so many little things throughout the match people get little grievances with each other people eliminate others by surprise and there's just a lot of other little stories that can be woven into it and spun off into other good business so I'm excited for it and I'm interested to see what they do like I said if anything I'm, I'm just jealous I'm not getting an opportunity to write uh, the match because it, this is the style of match again as, as convoluted and complex as it can be uh, if done correctly it can be very satisfying and, and a lot of fun and I'm, I'm excited to see what they do with it yeah it, it looks like so I pulled up uh, I pulled up on sports Gita. we've got uh, it is the gauntlet eliminator so uh, two men will start as every four minutes a new competitor comes yeah, in competitor and the only way to be in. eliminated is isn't by being thrown over top it's by pinfall or submission which is interesting I, now the the question is so is dq not a thing now that that throws another wrench into it and actually i don't like that as much i, I would like to see a dq be included as well simply because then that makes them have to work within the confines of the rules but if everyone can fight no disqualification then why wouldn't everyone just come out with a weapon you know what i mean yeah uh, and to me that that makes it a harder story to tell especially for the length of time because with hardcore matches you know i feel like it's hard to have a long hardcore match and after a while you're making a lot of that stuff especially with the weapons mean less and less as the match goes on so I'm hopeful maybe that was just something they didn't cover but I, I am hopeful that it is not a no DQ style of match I hope, I hope disqualifications are a thing and because again that also makes it more interesting because then at some point in the match you can have some kind of DQ where someone accidentally you know gets elimin eliminates themselves for whatever reason and that's another way to spin off a different story. Yeah, I mean, and some of the competitors, uh, Cameron Grimes, Rich Holland, Velveteen Dream, Bronson Reed, and even uh, Santos Escobar was on the graphic. So, interesting. Maybe we'll see if Legado del Fantasma kind of inter intervenes in this match some way, somehow, when, when they have it. Yeah, so it was announced that Io Shirai. So, basically, both both uh, championship contenders are, are going to be established uh, next week. So, that's interesting. Yeah. Oh, oh, and actually, so the next takeover is October 4th. Okay, so we got about a month. Oh, wait, no, not about a month. We're halfway no, through like September. Weeks. Yeah, so yeah, it's coming up. Two, three weeks, yeah. We're on to the main event of the evening tonight, Dr. Ted. And this match, I was really looking forward to this match. The, these two guys, I mean, Damian Priest's size and, and the way that they've been booking him lately and, and the guy like Timothy Thatcher who, you know, they showed him warming up in the back and he was doing some of his, like, shoot wrestling and, and grappling things. And I just... The story that they told in this match where Timothy Thatcher was just that Fujiwara armbar. He just tried. I mean, he, he got it on him a couple times and, and was able to get, get the big man down and, and, and you know, make it seem like he was going to gonna win with this, this arm. And, and, of course, Priest sold the arm throughout the match, but Priest was able to, to get, you know, his finishing move off and, and continue – his reign as the North American champion. I, this was his first title defense too, I believe. Correct. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. If mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So, so we, I mean, that spin and heel kick off the top rope was, uh, was something too. Now, not a big fan of, of, uh, priests dress today. I, I like him more in the, the, the black type of stuff. And I know the white kind of signifies a, more of a baby face kind of thing. I just, his look, that's just me being nitpicky about his look, but this was a really, really good, solid match uh you know thatcher ran out there did what he was supposed to do he worked the the arms and really made it seem like priest was gonna lose i mean that that one time where he had the arm bar locked in really tight i mean of course ted we do this every week i'm like yeah he's not like 
he's not going to just win this belt and lose it on his first defense. Um, but they really sold a really good match. And, and the, the story, like I said, the story they told in this match was great. Yeah, I, I agree. The only, the only thing I would say is, is as good as it was, I still want to see Damian Priest work his size more. Like Timothy Thatcher, you know, as skilled as he is, I don't feel is, is a big enough body for him to say, okay, I need to go to the top and hit a, a big spinning wheel kick. You know what I mean? I feel like now if he was wrestling, you know, someone that was considerably bigger and then he did all his regular stuff and it couldn't put him away, then, okay, then he needs to go to the top and hit something like that. But to me, it, it undermines his size when he hits those aerial maneuvers. Because don't get me wrong, they are impressive. And I think he can still incorporate them at the right moments. But the very first championship defense against someone that sizing them up it's not by much but Damian Priest is still bigger than Timothy Thatcher and so to me the again the value proposition for him to go up to the top rope to hit a spinning wheel kick you know it's to me it's for all intents and purposes a waste you know I not to say he can't ever do it but I don't think this was the time for that to happen in my opinion. But that, that's not taken away from you know they worked a good solid match but I also think long term business for Damian Priest it's going to put him over more to wait to bust that out that kind of stuff than to just bust it out willy-nilly because now even though he is a big guy it doesn't make him come across as big as he actually is when he's doing aerial maneuvers like that where you see Priest go after this I mean he he had a a tough challenger there at the beginning that's a good question Colin because actually that was what I was going to assign for this next week's homework is what is next for Damian Priest as far as who is going to be the next contender and I'd also like to know some context over some of the the things that might happen in between now and his next championship de- defense as far as what context is going to give someone basically what, what, what is going to be the story for him and whoever he is wrestling against next. And I would, I would challenge you because I think the easy one, because he's had a history with them. So I'm actually going to go and say, you might not like this call and I'm going to take away Cameron Grimes as an option. <sighs> I know, but only because I feel like that's too easy because he, yeah. he's the loud mouth and he can easily just, you know, go right back to the story they were telling. And so it, that might end up being the case. Don't get me wrong. So anyone except for Cameron Grimes or obviously Timothy Thatcher, because we, or we'll actually take that back. I'll, I'll allow it. If you can give, give an interesting reason why Timothy Thatcher can be reincorporated. Sure. But uh, I am going to leave Cameron Grimes off the table again, because I feel like that's, that's an easy go-to based on their history. And he's someone that, you know, can easily just kind of poke the proverbial bear to, to get him to agree to a championship match. So that is that is the question for this week's homework assignment is who is going to be next to challenge Damian Priest for the North American Championship and what's the story that's going to be the catalyst for getting us there? It doesn't have to be week by week, but you know what what is going to happen for somebody to get that shot at Damian Priest? I like it. Now, we did uh, – well, let me – I'll be remiss to say this. So, guys, like, like Dr. Ted said, that is your homework. Oh, yeah, uh, I, I always forget – Next, or next week next level wrestling review at gmail.com is where you yep. can send it in and 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 hit us up on twitter if you're in the discord drop drop any comments uh there in the humming media group discord to uh talk about the next level wrestling review uh ted and i will try to answer your questions and comments and and, and talk about things here on the show now but i forgot a segment that oh, i no. i enjoyed dr ted now i got i didn't get to see the the dinner at the house, but I'm pretty sure the week before I said that they were going to have a food fight. It was going to end up with Johnny Gargano issues were going to happen. And, and that's what we saw. The TV got broken and, and we, we got to see tonight. Uh, Johnny was on his laptop ordering a new TV. Yeah. I like getting that. Some ridiculous 4k 3d like television. And, uh, and and you know Candice LeRae is still kind of cutting the program promo about Tegan, and then they actually. But, she, and, but I still liked it, she, she did, but she had those it, it being married, it, and I liked the little looks that she gave him because I I felt that you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. He interrupted and with his stupid stuff, and she just kind of gave him a look like okay, whatever. Yeah. Uh, that that just put over that relationship too without It'll her even saying tomorrow. not even her saying a word. Yeah. Uh, and that was good too. That was good character work. But both of them do generally pretty well with character work. And then we had Tegan uh, doing her own little uh, spiel with all of her Captain Marvel gear and everything around her. And I liked the little jab at, at, at Johnny where she was just like, yeah, and his broke 
two hundred dollar TV so she he could watch his matches of him losing every week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah nice I will say this: this was a better promo from Tegan. I still feel she has a ways to go for making me feel invested in what she's saying. Uh, but I agree this this was a, a little bit of a step up. I thought she brought a little more pep to to her promo. But again, I, I still think it would behoove her to you know be able to get a coach. And again. Book the doctor at gmail.com. I'm glad to help. It doesn't have to be me, though, but I really think, and Tegan, if, if for some reason you end up getting to hear this, I, I would really encourage you to seek out uh, some some improv coaching because it would do you a world of good because I think she's hugely talented in the ring, but it's the the character work that's going to really take her to the next level and really get yeah. her over and and help to make her one of the greats. And, and she, she, she needs to get there. Um, and I hope she does, but uh, she, she has a, a little bit to go as far as that goes. But at least this week, I did feel it was a little bit in, in the right direction as far as I felt, I felt she brought a little more to the table this week. So hopefully as the weeks go on, we'll see more from her. And I like the fact that they're still pushing the uh, couple that, that wants the gold. Um, Cause uh, you know, Johnny even made a comment about like, you know, we're going to get that gold and we're going to be that first couple kind of thing. So, you know, I would like to see maybe six, six months to a year down the road once they've kind of worked out some of the stuff that they have here. I mean, I felt like, in the indies when they brought Candace in that she was going to be used for a lot more stuff uh, and, and possibly kind of rocketed up just because of who she worked with and, and the, and the matches that she's had and stuff like that. But I, I do kind of like this slow burn, you know, just really telling stories with, with her and Johnny, you know, being the married couple, being the, the, the sh- stirs of the pot, you know, so to speak. And, and, and I, I I'm excited for, to well to see where that that can go uh and especially with johnny like because he's just saying gold he he did not necessarily what kind of gold that johnny can get so you know johnny could potentially be that next challenger oh there you go uh north hey hey, quit 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 trying to to cheat on people's homework do do my homework while i'm still in class (laughs) yeah yeah save it for home it's (laughs) homework for a reason colin well, Dr. Ted, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed doing the show with you again today. That's glad uh, to have I, you back. I think, uh, I, th- I think I'm going to have to put this pillowcase back on my head. Well, before we do that, call it, or do you have anything you want to plug or, or put over before we... Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah let, me, let me do all of that. I mean, um, first off, if anyone knows a good chiropractor, this is where I've been sleeping the past couple days. My back is torn to shreds. You can clearly see it's just a metal slab. Uh, Bello, Bello took the bunk beds. Uh, luckily, hey, where's Bello? MS, luckily, MSG is uh, is is out. It was it was way worse when I had to deal with MSG and Bello in the same jail cell. Ugh. Wow, Ugh. I don't look. I don't know where he went. There's this poster that he has in the room, and he keeps like looking at this poster and every once in a while, like the posters just kind of flapping in the wind. Ted, you may want to look behind that poster. Uh, there could be a hole in the wall and uh, Andrew second. Bello is climbing through a mile of, of poop to, to get to the other side and to get to freedom. So I didn't say that you didn't hear that from me, but guys, you can find me on Twitter. Trying, trying to pull White Shawshank Song. redemption. Go little, ahead. Little Shawshank yeah. redemption. Yeah. Um, and you watched that a few weeks ago, didn't you? Yeah, for the first time since high school, because I hadn't, you know, I didn't remember the entire movie, so it was good to go back and watch again. Usually, yeah, people follow me on Facebook. Most of the stuff I post that I, I watch, I've been wa- sharing more of the things I've been watching. Uh, most of them, actually, I've never seen before, because there's a lot, just as a kid, I just wasn't exposed to, uh, you know, some of the classics, which, you know, when I got together with Ben Hameen back in the day, he was always so surprised, because he was, you know, impressed that you know i was able to at least bring some you know some context to to character work despite the fact that i hadn't seen a lot of these these american classics so you can follow along with me on facebook ted mcnailer if you want to see all the movies i've been watching and be able to catch up on and that was one of the few shawshank that i had seen but it had been so long i felt i needed to revisit it and it was very good it was uh, better even than what i remember it being well like like i said guys you can find me each week here on the Next Level Wrestling Review with the m- 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 man beast, Dr. Ted, Dr. B. Uh, you were on the Impact Attack with uh, my former co-host of the Smack Attack. I'm sorry you had to put up with that for almost two hours of Big Ray's sweaty Puerto Rican-looking head blinding you, the light and everything. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I listened to the show. I, I enjoyed it. Um, I it was liked a good time. The, the Ted C3 that you had going there. Um, 
guys, make sure you listen to Cage Theory. That's another show that I produce with JB Bulletproof Troop and uh, John Hartnett, who's been been missing for the last couple of weeks and uh, the ridiculously random podcast over the PW hustle networks.podbean.com where fame black and I just uh, talk, talk a myriad of random topics. And uh, it's, it's, it's a really fun show. We did uh, last week. Top, uh, we, we do a top five every week, Ted, we did a uh, top five horror movies oh, without cool. a sequel. Interesting. That was a, that was a tough one. The thing was the did, number uh, one on both of our lists. Really? Did, uh, did the cabin in the woods make make either of the lists? On it was it was on a list of someone that sent an email into the show. Um, that's one that I haven't seen, but I have heard nothing but like great things about Cabin in the Woods. It's good. You should check it out. It, and it's more of a in a weird way, almost like a spoof on the horror movie genre. Yeah. But also, I kind of like it because it's it's written very smartly. Uh, I definitely encourage you to check it out. It was one, and I'm again, I'm super behind on movies, so I'm sure you all probably had lists of movies that I probably hadn't seen any of. But that's one that I had seen that I remember it really sticking with me. Like, ooh, that was a that was a cool movie. It was a good twist on a, uh, you know, the, your your typical horror movie tropes. Well, well, Ted, if you enjoy a uh, kind of a thriller horror movie, um, check out Thirteen Sins on Netflix. Okay, um, it's a fun little movie. It's still on Netflix because I, I checked. I watched it maybe two years ago. Um, it's got it's a neat little concept of, of uh, moral dilemmas that it puts on on the main character and everything that he has to do. Uh, it's it's a really good movie, and uh, I had Beetlejuice as my number two. Interesting it's for a horror. Yeah, movie. he tried to say it wasn't a horror movie. I said it's got zombies and and scary things in it, and it doesn't have a sequel, so it's it's going on my list. Um, but like I said, guys, that's the ridiculously random what about, podcast. What, what about Kazam? Because no, that was just a horrible movie. Not oh, a horror, okay. gotcha, not a horror gotcha. movie. A horrible movie. <laughs> um, but like I said, guys, each and every week, uh, it usually drops on Thursdays, if not Fridays, on the PW Hustle Networks. And Dr. Ted, I'm 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 done plugging and shilling. Well, fair enough. Well, before you put that pillow back on, of course, I'd be remiss to say, of course, check out all the other great programming we have on the hackerhameen.podbean.com, as well as our affiliate page, hameenmediagroup.podbean.com. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're continuing to grow that. And I had mentioned the other day that uh, if we can get the YouTube channel monetized by the end of the year, which really it's just getting, uh, we need a thousand subscribers and then also 4,000 watch hours. So just besides subscribing, also need people to, you know, even YouTube probably wouldn't like me to say this, but even if it's just, you know, putting it on in the background to give us some, some extra watch hours. <laughs> but what I will do, because my wife has told me, you know, unless I'm getting paid for it, because I, I keep threatening I'm going to get a perm one of these days. And so I told her, all right, if we can get the YouTube page monetized by the end of the year, I will get a perm. And even Ben went on to say he might even get his beard perm. So I'll, if you I'll see us grow, both look I'll, ridiculous, then oh, uh, help, help I, us I'm get starting. it monetized. Share, subscribe. Like, it doesn't cost you anything, yeah. but uh, help, us, help us get there and uh, help me uh, get a perm and see the reaction that my wife has when I get it. I, we may have a, a, a divorce right live on the air, so... <laughs> It could be made for some great, great quality entertainment for everyone else except for me. <laughs> if, if, if I didn't have some changes uh, happening in my life here soon, I would uh, let the hair grow out. I normally let it. I, I go a long time in between haircuts. And, and if we got it there, we could have perms right here on the Next Level Wrestling Review. I love it. I think that would be a lot of fun. And maybe even bring Ben in with his permed, uh, permed beard. That would be be interesting i don't think i've seen that but I'll, i'd be all about seeing it i kind of really want to see it so uh, help us make it happen like i said share uh subscribe tell your friends tell your family tell everybody tommy media group is where it's at on youtube and yeah so definitely be sure to check it out but in the meantime don't forget next week's homework who is next for damian priest and what is the context for his new contender or next contender for the north american championship you can send in those to next level wrestling review at gmail.com in the meantime, hope everyone has a great weekend. We'll catch you next week. Colin, yeah, put that pillow back on, young man. And we will see you next week on the Next Level Wrestling Review.